In this tutorial, we will take a look at the use of shape data and data graphics in Visio diagrams and how shape data can be imported from a spreadsheet. Let's start by looking at an example that uses both shape data and data graphics. Here you see a small section of the Tenmin's family tree. To see shape data, select any person, right mouse click, choose data, shape data. Alternatively, from the view menu, task panes, shape data, toggles the shape data panel on and off. The shape data panel shows some basic information about the person selected. To see the source of this data, right click again, choose data, show linked row. Here we can see the data that comes from a spreadsheet that I imported earlier. Right mouse click again, choose data, data graphics fields. Here we can see that the field living has been chosen as the field that determines the data graphic, which is this cross or tick icon on each person in the tree. When starting a new diagram, be aware that some shapes are already defined with shape data. For example, if I use the basic flowcharts template, every shape already has several shape data fields defined. Unless you want to use these fields, I suggest you remove them before doing anything else. Right click on the shape panel, select define shape data and simply delete each field. You can now copy your basic shape as many times as you need for the people in the tree. Alternatively, draw your basic shape using the tool options on the Home tab. These shapes come without any shape data. But one word of caution. If you use the Change Shape tool, it has the annoying habit of putting the predefined shape data fields back on the shape. So let's undo that and instead change my shape using the Edit Options. to get the shape I want. Let's take a moment to look at the spreadsheet containing the data that will source the shape data fields. Note that there are two Joseph Tenmins, so we will need to pay attention after the import to make sure these two records are assigned correctly. Also note that the spreadsheet contains one person who is not on the diagram, Justin's twin sister, Justine. To save time, we'll skip to a completed version of the family tree diagram, which is ready for the import of shape data. To illustrate a point, I shall deliberately misspell Edward's name. This will prevent this object being matched to a row on the spreadsheet. Importing the spreadsheet is done from the data quick import option. Simply locate the spreadsheet, click Done, and Excel imports the data and attempts to associate rows in the spreadsheet with shapes in the diagram. It also takes a guess as to what data graphics I might want. Click Done when ready, and you'll notice a couple of things. There's a message telling me that two of the 11 rows can't be linked to shapes. Those will be um, Edward and Justine. You'll also notice that the diagram is now rather messy, and that's because we're showing data graphics on the diagram. I'm going to turn those off for now. We'll come back and tidy things up later. I'm also going to float the shape data window to tidy things up a little bit further. Now when I click on a person in the tree, 
I can see their information over here. So I can check the two Josephs. This is the 1893 Joseph and this is the 1935 Joseph. So those records have been assigned correctly. Now, Edward, of course, does not have any shape data because there was no match. I did this to illustrate a point. I've chosen an approach where text in the objects relates and match to a column in the spreadsheet, but you don't have to have this. You could leave your objects blank. You could put some other information in that's not in the spreadsheet. But if you do that and Excel cannot automatically match, then you have to manually link objects together. And that can be done by simply dragging a row onto the diagram, dropping it onto an object. And we'll see that Edward now has the appropriate information in place. And while I'm here, I'll just come in and fix that typo. Let's also add Justine to the tree. To do so, I simply copy an existing record, change the name, and drag Justine's record from the spreadsheet, drop it onto the object. You see, I get a warning to say that the object was already linked to a row. So Kathleen Weeks was linked to Kathleen Weeks. Um, it's asking me if I want to continue and replace that link. And yes, I do. It turns on the data graphics, which I'll turn off for now. And now when I select Justine, we see that our data is in place. And all I really need to do now, of course, is um, add a connector. The spreadsheet can be updated at any time. Simply add or change data, save the spreadsheet, and then return to Visio. Let's add a brother for Justin. Thomas Tenmins, male, born 1964. Let's change the date of birth for Kathleen Weeks from 32 to 31. And remember to save. In Visio, from the Data tab, refresh all. You see a progress bar here. It goes pretty quick when it's complete. We now have our new information. There's a line for Thomas, and I can see that Kathleen is 1931. Curiously, the refresh has spotted the fact that I have two names the same and has asked me to clarify it. I'm not sure why the refresh does this when the initial load didn't, but it's the way it is and we need to resolve it. So for each of them, I need to figure out the matching row. So the top Joseph is 1893 and the other Joseph is 1935. I could have used the automatic link option as well. I believe that gives me the same results as the initial load gave me. But OK, we've got our diagram sorted out. Everything is linked to something except for Thomas. So let's address that situation. We simply copy an existing record, change the name to Thomas, drag and drop the record to link and turn off the suggested data graphics. And Thomas Temmins is now on the chart. Uh, of course, I still need to add a connector. And there we are. Finally, let's turn our attention back to the data graphics. 
Let me just clear up some real estate. You will recall that Excel took a guess as to which of these I might want to use as data graphics and it got it wrong. What I actually want to use is living. So first let's make sure that I don't have anything selected because if I have something selected, this only applies to what I have selected. But by not selecting anything, the data graphic is applied to all the appropriate shapes. Looks ugly though. So from any one of the shapes, right mouse click and select edit data graphic. Here I can see that uh, living is the one that I've picked and I can edit. The first thing I want to do is change the icon. I actually want to use either the check mark or the cross. And I want the check mark to mean that the person is living. So the value would be yes rather than no. I don't want to use the exclamation. I want to use the cross to indicate the person is not living. I also don't like the position. Uh, it's fine on the right hand side there. So the horizontal position is good, but I want to move it up to the top edge. Let's apply that. And that looks good. I now have the desired results.